Hey guys, got a special treat for you. Jade and I once again did a video collaboration talking about the season finale of the series finale of Supernatural and just kind of our thoughts about the fandom and the season and the show itself. The discussion, which I originally thought maybe would have taken no more than half an hour, went on for an hour and a half. I'll either be splitting the rest into another or maybe two more videos, depending on how it goes and how our conversation went through it. Otherwise, enjoy the conversation, enjoy what we talk about, and you'll be seeing us talk about more throughout the week. Hey guys, new surprise to you for 2020. 21. Jade and I are back once again, and we are doing a little bit of a long overdue video, but we're finally talking about the finale of Supernatural, what our thoughts about it were, and just, eh, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a bit to talk about. But uh, first off, Jade, thank you for uh, doing this again, considering you, you've you moved and all the, the little, uh, all the uh, adventures you've been on the last little while. It's nice to do a video with you again. Thank you. I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about Supernatural. <laughs> oh, and I appreciate you dealing with me and my, like, sometimes very bad getting back to you out of emails. <laughs> it's, it's okay, because I do the same thing. <laughs> oh, it was, it was an, in, yeah, well, 2021 was a, uh, or sorry, 2020, sorry. <laughs> I'm already writing 2021 into it, but, um, yeah. but yeah, last year was certainly an interesting year um, of, of everything, but amongst that was the end of a show that some of us have been watching for 15 years, a show that had gone on for 15 years. And to say that there is a divide in the response to it is uh, a bit of an understatement. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> the, the IMDB reviews are a plethora of emotion, um, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of people who, there's very, very few who appear to be in the middle, if you were to say it like that. And I feel that you and I are kind of in that middle ground. Like, yeah. we, we can see what's good, but we also can see what's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like when I made my first video about the finale, I titled it, um, everything I wanted in the worst way possible. <laughs> which I feel like was very fitting. No, that's a, that is a good, that's an accurate. Yeah, because um, I, I have many issues with the finale. It's just like, on, on one hand, it's like this, I've loved this show so much over these past few years. It's been hard for me to be like critical of it because I'm just, I've just been so like, oh my God, I love it so much. But like now, now that it's over and like that's it, it's like, damn <laughs> um there's there, i just feel like there's a lot more that they could have done in this finale that they had the opportunity to do and they didn't do it well it's it, you can kind of almost say that with the entire season right like, yeah the fact that we waited <laughs> we waited half a year for seven final episodes and of those seven episodes ten, the first three were filler episodes mm -hmm. um Especially the one where they went, I can't, I'm trying to remember which one it was, uh, Carry, Drag Me to Hell or something, the one where they went to, they, they got that phone call from that person that they apparently met as kids, and mm -hmm. there was that Baba Yaga thing, which I remember sitting there going, why are you doing a retread of something that we've seen a billion times now? <laughs> do something that's actually meant to be about the finale. And then they did Unity, which was a, actually not a bad episode. And I felt that every one afterwards, Despair was garbage. And then Inherit the Earth was... Uh, it was passable at best. So Despair is episode 18, right? Yes, that's the okay. one where things just went to doo-doo. <laughs> yeah, so... um. My, with my, like, opinions on the finale and, like, the last few episodes, I feel like I liked episode 18, um, mainly because, um, Castiel's confession to Dean, uh, but, like, aside from that, like, um, I didn't really think that there was, like, I, I, at that time, I was really hopeful that this finale would turn out how, like, I would picture it. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I've never been able to, like, picture Supernatural ending in general. Um, but it gave me, like, a... For me, personally, it gave me, like, a little bit of a hope that, hey, maybe this finale won't be garbage. <laughs> um, and, like, after they took Cass and uh, Billy, episode 19, and that, that one's Inherited Earth, uh, yeah. I, I didn't even know what to think, because... 
I know that was like supposed to be like the end of the series arc, or not the series, the season arc um, for season 15, which like I could get behind. Um, but then with episode 20, I kind of feel like they just took everything just Ugh. it's it's hard to even put into words <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it was essentially it was the like it, the majority of that is just uh like little fan service fan service fan service and then an incredibly overlong death scene followed by a montage where you could see that the the, the seams were splitting like they were trying to cut as many corners as possible in terms of budget yeah. And mm-hmm. the wig. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the wig is like it is I was showing it to um some ladies who uh were on the show that I worked on and one of them happened to be the woman who uh gave um crap, one of my Crowley's mother. Why am I completely blanking on the name? Right? Rowena? Rowena, yeah. She mm-hmm. was the first one to do her hair. She was the one who gave her the hair that would be used for the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Um and she was, when I showed her Sam, she's like, oh my god, <laughs> what did they do? Uh, yeah. So it was being passed around work. It was being, like, it was being made fun of amongst, uh, on, on, for Vancouver film groups. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> it got destroyed on Twitter, too. Oh, I, I don't bet. know if you're on, like, yeah, I don't know if you're on, like, Twitter a lot, but um, that's... Um, I do know that Destiel was trending when episode 18 came out above the U.S. elections and above uh, Putin resigning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, Twitter was up in flames. Uh, Which, yeah, and that, that too, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's, I think that was as close to baiting as they could possibly get. I, I'm, I'm not really a shipper of it. It's just not my thing. Yeah, I, I more so think valid. that they're bros. Um, but... Mm-hmm. I've my opinion was if you're going to do it, actually do get it. the fucking <laughs> balls and do it, rather than yeah. they. I, I made I make a comment. I think that that's the that's Andrew Dab holding the carrot as low as he possibly can, but no one can actually reach it, and that's yeah. why I say everyone's like it's confirmed. I was like, no, it's not. It's 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 baiting. That is bait. Wait, what, mm-hmm. what, what's from uh, oh from Mad Max? That's bait. Yeah, uh, I know Misha uh, actually, like, uh, he, like, kind of confirmed that it was, like, Destiel was, like, kind of a real thing, but also he's not the writer of the show, so. No, and, I, 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 and then Misha, I Misha like is uh, is a little kind of interesting himself, admittedly. Like, um, I like the guy, uh, and admittedly he, is, he can be a bit, sometimes he's a little bit much, but I, uh, the fact that there was that weird spanish or was it italian italian italy so, oh, oh it was a spanish dub so uh i actually mentioned this in my video so um what people were like upset about and i i, I understand this because I, I do ship destiel um and i feel like it's up to everyone's interpretation of the show to come to their own conclusion on that even though i feel like there's been a lot of subtext that leads to dean and casts you know being a little bit more than bros but mm-hmm. it, it, again it's up to interpretation um but where was i going with this they yeah so the spanish dub uh the spanish dub version that was released i think in south america um after dean after cass says i love you to dean and i you yeah he says and i you in spanish back and then cass gets taken by the empty but in the english version dean just like sits there like uh so like um he called them rogue translators um, which, I mean, <laughs> everyone, uh, I know people on Twitter were saying that they're going to take the Spanish dub as them confirming yeah. SDL. So, like, I stand it, <laughs> but, it, it, um. <laughs> it was, it was kind of just odd that, um, like, one, that's it's really kind of an odd thing. But again, that does happen when things are translated, admittedly, like, when you have dubs or different translations, there's always a little bit of change in the dialogue. But I thought that was kind of a very, very impactful one. But I thought the thing that made me kind of a bit uh, about it was just how pointless it was. Not pointless, but I guess more underwhelming, because this has been something that Dab had had teased for a long time, and mm-hmm. then I was like, "That's it, that yeah, that's he, it." He baited, he baited it, everyone. It, I, <laughs> and I thought, it, I just, 
I think someone had made a comment that it was kind of funny that death was knocking on the door. But I just, I think I hated, I didn't hate, but I, I thought that Billy's character was just so boring at this point that I, I couldn't mm -hmm. give a crap. I was more interested in the empty. But then yeah. we had just seen the empty. This was one of the reasons why I hated Despair um, is because Jack died again. And he was brought mm -hmm. back again all of in the span of like five minutes and yeah <laughs> and i and i think i was like there, i i thought that that was just so ridiculous um mm -hmm. it, it made the jack character just even more pointless and then the whole ex machina thing with him being a power vacuum which oh and then my oh uh, then when michael betrayed them lucifer came back killed a reaper then killed death. It's just there was so much in that last episode that I was like, okay, you're 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 trying to give a lot here. Yeah, that um, honestly, episode nineteen, like, <laughs> I I when I think about it, I kind of like forget about all of that happening just because it was like so much, boom, you know? Boom, boom. Because they bought back Michael and Lucifer and like. Oh, that was a, that was a. All that. Yeah, I was very disappointed with Michael too. Like you know, you had teased him very well and then that's what you do with them mm -hmm. but because like i i liked the idea of having michael back earlier on and you know i i i fucked with that episode actually kind of like a lot it's just uh i mm, i just it was i think it was what was the context of it, it was like they were like explaining to michael that like god was like fucking shit up and everything and yeah he's an asshole um, and then all of a sudden yeah. he's like yeah you know what oh lucifer's been brought back Woo. Yeah, it was. I don't even know how to like explain that because I, I don't. I didn't mind like the last, um, like the ending of episode nineteen because uh, I I kind of like I liked how um, throughout like that episode they hinted at something being up with Jack and then you don't find out until the end. Um, which I mean I wasn't expecting that with the whole power vacuum thing. I knew Jack had to defeat him in some way. I just knew that that probably had to do with it i just didn't know what was gonna happen um and then when that did happen i was actually genuinely shook and i i uh i, I me, i'll admit it, i liked how i i can i say that the fact of removing chuck of all of his powers i thought that was a good idea mm -hmm, but because it keeps him alive and yeah it's like, but i feel that you could have used him in carry on which is what um i guess uh, the the essay that I'm talking about that's kind of one of my side ideas is that Chuck could have been used as uh, an adversary in the final final episode rather than random random vampires that that cameo too yeah but no, um, but obviously they, like, I think COVID <laughs> stuff probably did affect some of it some of it not as yeah, much as people course. think it did um yeah no um someone pointed out like oh well like well like in my comments I made a um. I don't remember the comment exactly, but in my video, I had mentioned how, like, um, people were using, like, COVID as the excuse for not bringing back certain people, which is valid. Yeah, it's that, just, uh, there is some valid, uh, some points to that, yeah. Yeah, and but the one thing I, I mentioned was the fact that in the last scene, um, after Sam and Dean have their little bro moment in heaven... It cuts to the whole cast and crew, and oh yeah, they're, that they're not wearing masks. Yes, yeah, so there's like <laughs> one or two who are. You can see there's a few of them, but some of them aren't. And admittedly, that probably wasn't the best. Like they shouldn't have done that. But yeah, um, you know, I I went back to work right at uh, about a month before Supernatural did, and mm -hmm. yeah, everyone on set has to wear masks. We get temperature checks. Um, there are certain shows now that, like, they do, like, a nose check. They do the... They, the the, the test? Tic yeah, the tickle your brain thing. Yeah. Um, they do that about every... Some big Netflix ones do two a week. There's a building that they bought. Netflix, in particular, they spent a million dollars on it. Um, it's going to be their own COVID testing center building. Um, Damn. So they don't have to hold up life labs, because admittedly, when the film industry went back to uh when it went when it went back into action the amount of tests in bc went from something i'd like maybe a few thousand every day to seventy thousand mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah no covid did affect certain things but it more so meant production 
Like, mm -hmm. The reason why most people, one, one of the key people who's not there is Eileen, which nipped a lot of people, myself included, but um, what they would have had to have done is have her come up from California, isolate for two weeks, because this is what we're doing with all American actors. They yeah. isolate in their hotel room for two weeks, then they come to set, they do their thing, and then they go back home again, but then they have to isolate again for another two mm -hmm. weeks. And production has to pay for almost, if I'm not correct, all of that. So as we saw with the final episode, they were cutting so many fucking corners in terms of yeah. budget. Like they couldn't even give Dean blood as he's dying. Like they gave it a little yeah. bit on his back, but if he's supposedly dying, he, he should have been like Bleh, from the mouth too. Which... Yeah. But that, see, um... And then the masks, too. The vampires weren't wearing masks because of COVID. They was just because they didn't want to do the CG effect. That, mm -hmm. that, a hundred percent why they did that. Oh, yeah. And, like, the whole concept of the vampire mimes just... For, for a finale, that aggravates me a oh. lot. Just because I, I feel like, yeah, it, like, Sam and Dean, like, have been fighting vampires all their life. But I just feel like for, like, their last hunt... It should have been demons. Yeah. Or, like, something... I don't know, um, that's, cause like, on, on one hand, it's like supposed to show us how like they take away the god, how like they don't have the god armor anymore, Which, right? even then, that's kind of like leaving a lot up into interpretation, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't, like, I don't know, I feel that it, I understand what he was trying to signify with like the ordinary rebar, but mm -hmm. it is... It's a bit of a stretch in terms of what they're asking the audience to accept. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly, um, part of me just wants to forget that episode 20 even happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll take episode 19 as the ending of Supernatural um, any day over that. Just because mm -hmm. I personally feel like, um, you know, with, with Sam and Dean, it's like hard to picture them having a conclusive ending. And I feel like if they had left it open... Um, not only could they come back and do a reboot or a movie or something like that in order to like give them a proper ending not mm -hmm. like this um, but it, it's just it, I feel like it would suit their characters more mm -hmm. if you know what I mean just because like we don't have to know what happens until like their very last moment of being alive what? but on the same hand like I, I do like the fact that Sam and Dean ended up in heaven together I just don't like how we got to that <laughs> oh well that was something that I feel like instead of spending 10 minutes with Dean dying from slightly irritating back pain you should have spent <laughs> more time on Sam like figuring out his life like cause yeah exactly it, because he, he en the episode end or the, the part ends on the montage of him walking up the stairs looking at the room looking super depressed like oh I guess I'll just go on killing things uh, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's got a kid I was like where the fuck is the transition there yeah and uh, speaking of um, before you mentioned Eileen and I, I under like um, I know that like bringing her back would be like a difficult thing to do but they could have like done subtle things in order to photoshop like, her into that. a photo or some shit yeah or maybe even have sam teach his kid uh dean jr uh, yeah sign it, language. yeah or exactly when they show the faceless wife have him sign or something like that it's just like they have the opportunity to one include her it, yeah to and, acknowledge that it's have, her yeah and especially to have like representation for no, people who uh, are hard of hearing yeah too. i make you know it, what I, mean? I, so. I make that exact comment actually in, in my essay that's going to be coming um yeah but uh there was something else that oh the other thing that kind of i felt was such a cheap takeaway was when bobby said that castiel he brought he brought castiel out of the empty and then they fixed heaven and i was like no no and we didn't even get a voice dub or anything well I, I figured you should just kill him don't no like yeah, don't no, bring him back <laughs> again make that sacrifice actually mean something make it that <laughs> like like castiel doesn't exist on any like he's not even in the empty he's just gone like wiped yeah. from existence my whole issue with um with castiel in this finale is not like a his confession i felt like was very you know heartfelt and true to his character it's everything that happened after that um because you know he disappears from, he doesn't matter anymore. yeah and you know dean maybe mentions it once and it's never addressed again until you know 
they, it just never gets addressed. And he isn't even in the finale, which is something that I've... I, I take issue with the fact that Castiel wasn't in the finale, just because I feel like as a... Um, one of the main... Obviously, I know that like with COVID, it's really hard to get more actors on set. So I, I try to keep that in mind. But Sam, Dean, Cass, right? If that like the show has been about f- family and like the family that they make that isn't their blood family mm-hmm. and it just kind of felt like if supernatural if i watched the first episode of supernatural i could tell you exactly what i could like the ending would be because it, it just kind of threw 15 years of character development out the window and cuz you don't even get a name drop of like half of the people that oh i i feel bad for um oh for kim rhodes for her mm-hmm. uh for oh man why am i blanking on her nat why am i blanking on her name right now her character's name jody jody there we go Boo. yeah jody i i you have no idea what happened to jody last time you saw her she technically <laughs> poofed yeah same thing with the, like all the apocalypse world people oh and that that just mm, Brianna, that. uh what's Felicia Day. No, I'm blank. Felicia Day yeah. never came back. Uh, alternate mm-hmm. Bobby never came back. Like it was, mm-hmm. it he. I think that when Dab did the whole apocalypse thing and he brought the people over, he's like, "Oh, wait a minute, I actually have to do something with them." Ah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna forget about them. I yeah yeah no. It, there was so much opportunity for season fifteen to actually have things, but instead they focused on. I don't know. I, I've actually, to be honest, I've have in speaking with people like on this show that I worked on. Not only was the makeup department a part of it, but there was some ads that were actually on the show. One of them, actually, in fact, was an ad who had been on the show for literally half of its existence. And he did come up to me to ask me. He's like, "Oh, what did you think of the last episode?" He thought he asked me about nineteen, and I was like, "Eh." <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it, um i've i've heard a lot of different interesting stories that i i don't want i, I really want to preface there's no it's just from what i've heard from these people which admittedly there's a lot like the word of mouth passes very very strongly in the in the film industry but apparently jared and jensen actually had a lot more creative control than what i've from than from what we've seen um they are the reasons why the show is going on as long as it was um apparently also that and then uh it was robert singer and them who said we're done we don't want to make this show anymore and you're not going to get anyone who's going to want to continue to kind of i hate to say the word but feed your ego um but yeah it was it, it, it kind of was a little bit tumultuous at the end of the show. Like, there was that one episode. What was... Oh, oh, the one I hated the most, Last Call, which was essentially a giant homage to Jensen Ackles. Like, the episode was all about him and his beer and singing and whatnot. And yeah. I was like, this isn't a Supernatural episode. This is a Jensen Ackles uh, tribute episode. Yeah. See, I... um, You know, with the narrative that that's been kind of pushed in the fandom from what I was aware of was that um jensen and jared didn't really have a say in what happened in the end of the show and that it was their decision that come to it but i i actually didn't know that now that you tell me it's kind of like it's shit it it, (laughs) from what it's well because it was a very contained family like there was what was it um some people had been working on that show not there wasn't many left who had started at the beginning but there were some who had been like the transport crew apparently were the same team for four like the last 11 years Mm -hmm. um there was grips and lx departments that had been working on that show for 10 plus years um and a lot of them were like oh what the hell do we do after this yeah but that's why that that that's feeling of kind of i I would make the comment in the ladders and how the seasons went on like it just felt like it was getting lazier or more more complacent like there wasn't as much interesting camera work. Like I'm seeing from the first four seasons so far, is there was a lot more effort put into it. Um, yeah. And it just kind of was like, oh, let's go to work, do the thing, and go home. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but once you go when you go on for something like that long uh, complacency is going to happen whether you want it to or yeah. not it's um you know i yeah I, I I agree with that. Throughout like the seasons, like the as the show has gone on longer, you can tell that the effort that they put into everything, uh, you know, the story and the camera shots and all that stuff. It, it's like they have like the opportunities to do so much more with it, and like especially with this last. I my, where my issue mostly is is the last episode. That's where I. Um, yeah, you know, I could like swallow all of season fifteen and the entire and like the entirety of Supernatural had the last episode not been what it was. <laughs> yeah, I I find it funny that it was like I I remember saying I was like I think this uh, this is gonna sh this show is gonna end with the brothers dying. I didn't think it would be that way. Like Dean, I was technically yeah. correct, but Sam, I was not. Um, but uh, I don't know the. There are some el like there's some elements I don't mind like I think the part where when Dean all of a sudden says you remember when I came and got you from your dorm yeah like, I, I stood cried up. throughout that entire scene by that, the way. I was bawling my eyes well, out yeah, the <laughs> first part of it was just was like oh god he's so hammy oh yeah. and then he said that it's like oh hey that's relatable because he said I was scared I was too I was scared to ask you for your help. Mm -hmm. But then, and then there's like, okay, you can go now. And then he's like, bye, Sam. And I would just remember going, Bleh. <laughs> it was just so, it was so hammy. Um, but I don't know, like the pie thing was, eh, it's, it's hard to kind of talk about Dean dying for the third time and having it mean something like, and I say third time, like I'm meaning legit, legit death. Because mm -hmm. he legit died in three, he legit died in ten. Which, sorry, nine. Which, um, something that I keep going back to when I'm doing my essay is how he died in season nine is technically how he should have... Like, that's how he should have died in season 15. Um, they're just trying to regurgitate that death very poorly. Yeah, um, I get that. Because I, I feel like with... Um, I don't... When I was thinking about, like, what the Supernatural finale would entail of, I knew that I was going to be hurt. <laughs> and I, I knew there was going to be things that I wouldn't like about it, and there was going to be things that I, like, loved about it. Um, and with, like, Dean's death, I, I just kind of felt like that was a cop-out. Because there were, you know, they could, like you said before, like, they could have had Chuck come in. Maybe, like, I don't know. I don't really think chuck could like really hurt sam and dean but like if well without his powers but like they could have brought him in and like i don't know made something that like follows the like what they just dealt with all season mm -hmm. instead of just oh they die on a vampire hunt and it's i've always pictured the like their death if they were going to die i wanted them to die together just because you know, Sam is my favorite character, and um, him having to live his whole life without his brother really got to me. <laughs> um, just just because uh, they both deserved so much better, and they both like basically fought for this um, freedom that you know they've been fighting for like basically all of their life, and they finally got it. And then like a week later, Dean gets killed on a fucking screw. <laughs> well, so. they could have gone out something like butch da uh, butch cassidy and the sundance kid like gone out blazing like i i feel that would have i almost think that could have been an ending and in itself on that yeah like if if they had gone out in a way that was like um i don't know say like it wasn't like four vampires but it was like 30 <laughs> or something like that then like sam and d don't really have that much of a chance against like 30 vampires but like if they just cut the screen to black then then like we'd know what happened yeah like, they went out fighting yeah that so. as well as what was something else like you uh i think you were um, had a, in, in your comp in your list of things to talk about you think that if jack was had, had become what he was don't you think he would have rid the world of monsters yeah so that was something that um you know when i think about um 
I this kind of feels like a Chuck ending. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, like tragic. <laughs> so I think that like if Jack was to become God, why did he bring back Cass? Why did he leave all of these monsters still there for Sam he, and Dean he to fixes, fight? He fixes he fixes heaven, but that's it. Yeah, and it, he says just... hands off, but he's clearly not hands off. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I thought it was. I, I again though like for three year, three years of building up a character who was essentially a child, um, I don't know. I just I never got behind the the the, the Jack thing. I just it, I felt I kept waiting for the character to have like an actual importance above being what he was, and it always teased at it, and then like oh. This is it. This is what you've been like. I don't know if you would actually been building towards this with, with Chuck. I think that you had an idea, and you're like, oh shit. But then again, Dad proved over the years that he didn't have a consistency in terms of keeping to the ideas that he had. Um, he couldn't. He was almost like a, a a dog, like that could easily be distracted by something else. Yeah, I felt that. <laughs> that was uh. me. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.